Hey, it's Zendaya here with episode two of Salam Dunk. Now, in our first episode, we got to meet these truly pioneering young women and saw how they created their own basketball team. In this episode, we get a deeper glimpse into their lives. We learn about the country they grew up in, the school they go to, and the circumstances that brought them together. We also get to see if they can go two for two by winning their second game of the season. Check it out. I love basketball so much and when I got low grades and be in probation I knew that I love basketball more than I thought. It's like my soul for me. The next six weeks of not playing is going to remind you that you're here not just to play basketball, but to be a student also. And that's important. But it's also going to remind you how much you love to play. It's going to make you work so hard these next few weeks. And we've got tutors for you, and you're going you're gonna to pass your classes. Mama? Yeah. Child? <laughs> <laughs> In Ola, I see as much love for the game as in, in, in anyone. She, she loves playing basketball. It was hard to watch her go on probation and, and not be able to play. On the other hand, coaching basketball was a byproduct of, of why I'm here. I, I'm the deputy director of the English language program here, preparing students for the mission of the university, which is to, to give them a great education. If you talk to faculty members here, all of them, irrespective of their views of the war, have some sense of moral responsibility, uh, and they, they really want to help rebuild this country. is very new. Um, we opened our doors in um, October 2007. We want to be the university which produces the future leaders of Iraq. To get into the university, whether your, your parent is the father or a president of Iraq, doesn't matter, because if you don't pass the entrance exam, you don't get in. You know, there have been students with connections and contacts who haven't gotten in, or who have failed out because you don't pass the academic requirements. We don't compromise on that. Our students here will become the next leaders, the, the future Iraqi leaders, absolutely. Yeah. 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 For all my family, they are sure that this university is the best uh, university in Iraq. But sometimes we are a little afraid about talk about that, uh, especially in Baghdad. Oh, when I went to my high school, I couldn't say that I'm from AUIS University. It's not because of rich person, it's because you are joining American University. Well, if anyone asks me here, uh, you are in which uh, college or which university, I will say, I am in AUIS. <laughs> I'm proud. But in Baghdad, I will never say that. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I'm afraid. On Mondays, it's going to be Juan. On Tuesdays, you have Inji. And then on Wednesdays, you've got Sally. So every day, you've got one hour of reading help per day. That's just the help you're getting. You've also got to do everything at night on your own. You can tell, uh, tell your brothers they can make dinner for, your, for the family. You need to study. <laughs> I don't think the food will be very good, though. She got the, the permission or to be in that team because we trust our family, we trust each other. Yeah. She said that I can manage studying beside the team. Both sides, yeah. 
but when she realized that it's it's affected uh, her, her grace and it did. Thank you very much. No, thank you. No, no, it's not me. It's the her teammates. Yeah, but you made that yeah. 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 you. But your teammates are the one. Uh, your parents should know that it's your teammates. They'll be yeah, they'll be with you on where you know, when, when I'm gone, and they they need to. We will pause. Well, uh, you're right. That's the wrong way to put it. But they're they're the ones doing the work. I think people here are just inured to this idea of transience and of the fleeting nature, not just of life, of that you might die, but that people are going to come and go. On a personal level, it's gonna be really hard to leave. I didn't have students like this in the United States before I left. I won't have students like this when I go back. Knowing that I'm a part of that process of, of coming and going of, of people who are here and then they're gone is tough. I'm not gonna let you win. You, if you beat me, you have to beat me for real. All right, let's get it in and then let's get out of the rain before we all get sick. Did I really just lose to you guys? <laughs> All right, who are we? One, two, two three. three. Hey, let's go. No, no, I have to make it. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Let's go. Knock this down before we both die of pneumonia. I mean, eventually everyone will go back to their country. And they will go back to their lives, and that's something we we know it here. Uh, from the beginning, from the start. Come on, come on, concentrate. There it is. The ball's heavier, you gotta lift it a little bit higher. Look at your toe, You're, you keep missing this way. Look where your toe's aimed. We are so close to coach Ryan. He's like our older brother, not just our coach. It would be so different not having him next year coaching us. Really good club. Some of them have been playing basketball like for 10 years. They don't score. You guys are doing a great job defensively. Remember, when your girl has the ball, you want to stay in front of her and you want to force her which way? Force her left. Good. The same game was so fast because they are a club after all. They were faster and they were smaller. They were just like kind of small little devils running around. So like we are like going to continue like winning games, you know. After the kissing game, we are like, uh, we are still not there yet.
until every member of the team is out here stretching, until that minute occurs, we're going to run one sprint for every minute until then. Everybody on the line? First group up. Ready? You better get a whole lot louder, a whole lot faster. Come on, let's move. Next group. Ready? Who's up next? Ready? Ready? Everybody on the wall. Everybody on the wall. On the wall now. Where did you learn to play? Where? Practice. Louder. Practice. How long did you practice before you won a real game? Two years. Almost two years, right? And so now, do you want to just win one game? Is that going to be it? You want to practice for two more years before you win again? No. No. Most of you didn't know how to dribble a basketball when you got here. Now you're out playing for a college basketball team. But you have to earn that every day right here. And you don't earn that by showing up late. You got to be here. You got to put in the work. OK? Let's have a good practice today. Here we go. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, it's a good job for the women, not the women. It's a good job for the women, not the women. It's a good job for the women. It's a good job. يعني كذي كور فرق كتير، كتير فرق كتير. حزم من بوية كوا يعني أفريتان من بالا بوش من نجر رود بكرة نوانيو بس نساحة كان نوانيو بهزارها كوري جنجو أخوه بيان بوب كاتو. بس بنستخدم نوا صوت تادي وأصلاً صوت زوج بيستا نكر يعني شتك تادي بيت بقى كزور بيستا. تاكي مجتمع ما بتوفاكي ناجون باري خودني نا ناجون بار طانق باري خودنا كتكيش بارن دي بتاكي كتكيت ما قرتينا ناشين دي في حرية تاخو دي بدلي خوار زي الشبكة ونجي من اقادار بم لطالكاني شطة افرد نا هاتنا بواري ورشوة بلام لدوي طالكاني حفتا ويستر والدور دا لنا ديكانا بتايبتي بار وردكاني ورشية وانا هاتنا ناو كوري ورشوة جياني كو ملايتي كردواري خومان مقيد بون بويكا و شكاني نخنا بواري ورشوا. There's still 30 minutes left in practice. There's plenty of time for you to get up some, to make some good things happen today and to get better. Okay? Nice move. Much better. Go in for Dila. Play it. My life in Sui is different than Baghdad in many ways, really. And now I feel I'm alive. <laughs> in Baghdad, I was only going to school and came back home. Now I'm spending every single minute doing something new. Drama. Basketball. Tai Chi. I'm working now in newspaper. I would go home really tired and I just sleep till next day and come to school and have the lectures and then we study and then I have basketball or I have something else so I just keep my day busy all the time, all the time, all the time. So it helped me to move on. About that, Janet قبل انت صغيرة قبل 2003 قبل الحروب كان جدا مكان آمن و بعدين 2003 صارت والحروب صارت دمرت بغداد تماما تماما بدا اهلها يروحون يسافرون بغداد صارت جدا فارغة بعدين ملت مرة الاخ بوجوه جدا غريبة تغيرت ريحتها تغيرت تغير شكلها بغداد بعد مو بغداد. There's certain places in Iraq that are still backward, and there's certain places in Iraq in the same they're really like going forward, you know. And now I'm I'm I'm, I'm living in Sudi, which is one of these places where which is going up up up, going up, growing up. 
from a practical and security viewpoint, it had to be here in Suleimania, in the sense that this is really the only safe place in all of Iraq at the moment where students can come and study freely and openly, not only politically, but in the security environment. We have all sorts of students here. This last year, I'd say maybe 15 or 20 percent of the students came up from the South, largely Baghdad. We're doing everything we possibly can to bring up as many kinds of students as we can. In regards to tension between Arabs and Kurds, of course, yes, there is. You can't wipe out 30 years of violence, aggression, and war. By the time 1980 rolled around, to be an Iraqi meant to be an Arab nationalist Ba'athist. And the Kurd was not a good Arab nationalist nor a Ba'athist. They represented for Saddam everything that the Iraqi state was not to be. With the creation of an autonomous zone, a safe haven, if you will, slowly the region started to engage in the types of activities that normal states would do. But the key moment really was 2003, with the overthrow of Saddam Hussein, with the creation of a federal Iraqi state, a constitution that gave the Kurdistan region, for the first time in its history, the right to exist as a political entity in Iraq. This episode really helped me understand why these girls care so much about basketball. The school might be there to train their minds, but basketball ignites their passion. When I first started watching this documentary, I was surprised by how much I could really connect with these girls halfway across the world. They felt so much like me and my friends. But in this episode, you realize that they've had to endure things that we'll never have to experience. They've had to deal with war, losing their homes, and never knowing how long people are gonna stay in their lives. And so for them, basketball is an escape, especially for someone like Leilan. It's so much more than just a sport. It's a way of keeping her mind off the things that she doesn't wanna see every day. Make sure you check out the next episode where we get to watch these women from all different, sometimes conflicting backgrounds come together as a team. If you wanna see more powerful stories like this, make sure you subscribe to the Teen Vogue channel.